Hi, my name is Attorney Walter Not the Third. I want to talk to you about one of the things that President Biden is doing that is absolutely incredible, and it's a really, really, really good thing. And I know that uh, he's not on TV as much as everybody was used to, and I, and I understand that, but I want to go ahead and push something here because it's very near and dear and personal to me. Uh, let me go into it real quick. Uh, this is from the News and Observer right here. Uh, bottom line is pre-K, pre-K, kindergarten, first grade, Pre-K is critical. What they're talking about is promoting a national plan to give two years of free preschool to all children. Uh, President Joe Biden is proposing spending $200 billion on universal preschool for three- and four-year-olds as part of his American Families Plan that he, pitches, that he pitched to Congress. Uh, Cardona and state leaders said Thursday that two years of preschool will help give. It's not a long article. Just hang on children the skills they need to prepare them for school and life we know blah 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 the american family plan is in all would spend 1.8 trillion which would be covered by higher tax rates on the wealthiest and other irs enforcement changes which those other irs enforcement changes uh, they're not good they're even things where they are able to look into your accounts and stuff like that they're able to basically snoop around which is very scary but Bottom line is, uh, you know, and, and do we really need to tax the wealthy more? Or can we just be more efficient with the money we do get? You know, then we get into that. Um, we have an unprecedented transformational opportunity with this federal money, hopefully coming our way on this issue. Cooper said at a news conference with Cardona, it's something uh, that we must do in order to make sure that we can create a high quality of life and an opportunity for all these children to get good paying jobs. All right. So... The reason why this is all coming up is because, and a little headline says, NC not meeting pre-K pre -K goal. The national plan comes as North Carolina still hasn't reached its goal of providing free pre-K to 75% of the state's at-risk four-year-old children. The state has seen increases in pre-kindergarten enrollment, reaching 31,000 children, roughly 50% of those eligible for enrollment. Uh, dropped by more than 9,100 children this school year during the coronavirus pandemic. So here's the bottom line. They're looking to fund pre-K and basically make it a federal thing beyond what they were already doing. And I know that some of you are like, why do we need to take more money for this? The truth is, if we just ran the government more efficiently, we wouldn't need to take more money. But the focus here, yeah, I understand the whole taxing thing, I get that. But the focus here should be, do we need to give pre-K to more kids? Is more education at that age useful at churning out smart, educated and great working Americans. So let me tell you a little background story with myself. Um, when it comes to, and, and I support Biden on this in a big way, when it comes to myself, uh, when I went to pre-K, I was basically, my birthday is one of those months that falls right at that like, eh, you could hold back a year, go forward with a year. And just, you know, the men in my family uh, mentally develop a little bit slower uh, when we're younger. And uh, it takes basically more time for us to get up to steam. You know, by the time we basically get a fifth grade into sixth grade, we start to be the dominating factor mentally. And we start, you know, we start to be like, you know, captain of the chess team, president of the chess team. We start to be, you know, great at sports and we start to be mentally capable of going above and beyond the normal standard of what the average intelligence is. So the bottom line here is we start to kick butt. But in the beginning, we actually develop a little bit slower genetically. It's just how it works for the males in my family. As a result of that, um, I was held back in kindergarten because I was not mentally ready to go into first grade. And the bottom line was that they held me back a year, uh, which then gave me the opportunity to go ahead and go into kindergarten with a lot of other students that were basically around my age, or rather to go into first grade with a lot of other students that were my age. A lot of people don't realize that, but I was actually held back a grade way, way in the beginning you know, before I entered in the first grade. And uh, that was helpful because, like I said, genetically, I, you know, the, the men in my family just mentally develop a little bit slower in the very beginning. Um, but, you know, the bottom line is, you know, obviously now I have a master's and a doctorate and this and that and yada, yada, yada. But the bottom line is um, that uh, not all kids develop at the same rate. I just want to, a lot of people don't realize that and moms realize that, you know, but not all dads do. Not all dads do. You would think they would, but not all dads do. Um, there's a lot of people who still don't realize, or people that choose not to have kids. We choose not to have children, and therefore we are going to put our expectations on you, the people having children. Um, not all people understand that 
kids mentally developed because we're all genetically different. Uh, we're not all equal in that regard. We're all special human beings. We're all genetically different. Not all kids develop at the same rate. You know, my, my development rate is instead of, you know, your classic this, it's one of these and then this. And inherent with that, um, I think this is incredible. It gives children more time to basically begin the process of learning and having academia be a good, strong foundation. Now, of course, there's the whole political agenda of what are we going to be teaching these kids in pre-K? How are we going to be, you know, teaching them this? Are we going to brainwashing them into a particular agenda? I understand that there's all these other sub agendas and political things at play and blah, blah, blah. I get that. I know. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about making sure that young kids who have a different development schedule than other kids, right, that have the classic traditional trajectory, this is about making sure that they have a better shot, a better shot at basically getting into the academia field at first grade with a higher standing and a higher knowledge and ability to go ahead and do better. Now. You might say, well, what about the curve? And they don't, they don't curve kids in first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade. Fifth. They don't curve kids anymore with that stuff. I had that in my school because I went to a fancy blue blazer, highly aggressive school where I was competing against the smartest kids on the East Coast. You know, there, was, there was, what was it, Lawrenceville, the Hill School, and the Moravian Academy. And I went to Moravian Academy. But the bottom line is this. you got to understand, this is good. This is a good thing. Two thumbs up for Biden on this. Why didn't other presidents come out with this? Well, there were development of state-based, you know, there were programs. But still, this is good. This is a good thing. This is going to get more people uh, integrated with the system to create better work product, to be more competitive in the international environment. And then hopefully if we can just get our politicians to spend more wisely, hopefully we can move in the right direction. All right. My name is Attorney Walter Flanth III. And this is one of the things that President Biden is doing that is really incredible. I stand by it, and uh, I am somebody who literally lived this. So uh, have an absolutely wonderful day. I'll catch you a little bit later. Remember, uh, if there's something you want to add or you want me to go into something a little bit more, shoot me an email, give me a call. If this helped, subscribe, like, shoot me a five-star. I always appreciate those. And also, if you want to give an opinion on something like this, I welcome it. 8 to 10 every Thursday, I go live on YouTube, Eastern Standard Time, every Thursday, 8 to 10. Have an absolutely wonderful day, and we'll go from there. Thanks so much.